The state of Florida is where woke goes to die. This course on black history, what are one of, what's one of the lessons about? Queer theory. Now, who would say that an important part of black history is queer theory? That is somebody pushing an agenda on our kids. You mean to tell me that the history of those people aren't imp isn't important? You're saying that the history of America isn't important? Because it's not really black history, it's the, it's the history of America. Honestly, he don't know what he's talking about. Can you imagine um, someone saying that European uh, studies or Western civilizations has no inherent value whatsoever? We have teachers who are not able to teach the curriculum that they want because it, they disagree uh, with Ron DeSantis and his view of the world. That is limiting free speech. They are trying to shield students from the truth about history. We are nothing without our history which is exactly why conservatives are going after public education in America to erase, dismantle, and rewrite the true account of our past. What happened on this soil, the oppression that was fought and overcome, and which shaped who we are and the very moment we are in. History is vital, as is knowledge. It's why education is so often ground zero in the U.S. culture wars and why Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's apparent White House ambition strikes at the heart of the American classroom. DeSantis has staked his political future on a bid to block an advanced placement course in African-American studies, saying it lacks educational value. It's that fight, which DeSantis started, that has brought protesters, clergy, political and civil rights leaders to Tallahassee, to the shadow of the old Capitol building that once served as Florida's seat of Confederate secession. Black history is not a crime! And it could prove to be his first big political mistake, fighting to kill wokeness, only to wake up thousands in his state to fight back. Their message to the governor, keep your political agenda out of our schools. So how can you stand and try to rewrite history for a race of individuals that you are not even a part of? Really, you just don't want to talk about the tough parts of history? I mean, that's cowardice. History is a beautiful, ugly story, and you got to embrace all of it. Black history does not make anybody uncomfortable. Racism makes people uncomfortable. Injustice makes people uncomfortable. Everybody needs to learn. Like, we need to represent those people who have been mistreated throughout history because African American history is America's history. You should have left us alone. Now you have brought us all together. If you would study history, Governor, you would have known to mess with us in education always ends to your defeat. I heard you say that Florida is the state where woke comes to die. We came to tell you, Governor, you just resurrected woke with more power than it has ever had. Thank you for trying to kill it, because now God is going to resurrect it. Well, we are live from Tallahassee at the Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, where Reverend Al Sharpton and the National Action Network kicked off today's march to the old state capitol to protest Florida's war on black history. Joining me and this wonderful crowd behind me is our very own Reverend Al Sharpton, president of the National Action Network and host of Politics Nation, Florida State Senator Chevron Jones and State Representative Michelle Rayner Goolsby. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to go to you first, Rev, because, um, you know, I think you, you made a point today that I think is really key, is that, you know, education has always been at the core of the fight for black equality and advancement, going all the way back to make it, it being illegal for slaves to know how to read. Um, what do you make of the fact that this governor has decided that education is the ground where he wants to fight black people in order to impress a certain group of white voters? He's hitting at the core of liberating people because you can't uh, hold people down if they're enlightened. And if you can censor what they know, then you can, in many ways, inhibit their behavior. And it strikes a chord with us 
when we are uh, those of us that are descendants of those that were enslaved, know that our great grandparents, my great grandfather was a slave in Florida. Mm -hmm. And he, it was against the law for him to read or write. And whites would be prosecuted uh, and endangered if they taught a slave how to read and write. So here we are, three or four generations uh, uh, past, and you're now going to tell us that we will decide what part of black history is acceptable and comfortable to us? Well, we need to talk about what was uncomfortable for blacks and others, uh, for Latinos, for poor whites, for uh, LGBTQ, and how we dealt with that discomfort. The history of America is trying to deal with everybody's plight in this experiment for democracy, not try to eliminate the parts you want. And he's doing it for political reasons, Joy. He feels if I can do what Donald Trump did, Donald Trump launched his political career off of birtherism, saying that Barack Obama was other. And then he went on from there with other racial kind of tones. So now we have Ron DeSantis, who I call baby Trump, who is now trying to do the baby Trump thing and come with a new racial divide. Like he is in some way going to liberate America from its past, rather than to say, let's glorify that these people were enslaved and fought their way all the way to where we put a black man in the White House, reelected him, and have a black woman as vice president today. Tell the whole story, baby yeah. Trump. Yeah, I mean, and the thing is, you know, you said on the, the Senate, Education Committee. You know, we talk about this all the time right. on the show. I mean, going through and doing the research for this show today, what was astounding to me, someone came up to me um, and said this to me, and then we went and verified it. Only 11 out of 67 right. counties right now are following the law. That's right. It is the law in the state of Florida, going back to 1994, that African-American history be taught. Setting aside the AP courses, which are voluntary for advanced students. Right. It's not being taught in the vast majority properly in right. the vast majority of counties and the Department of Education division that's supposed to fund creating the curricula is deeply underfunded. Absolutely. So this is not a war he started, DeSantis, with the AP course. No, absolutely not. African-American studies has always been a divisive issue in being, in, in, in being taught the right way. In 1993, when I was in third grade, then Senator Frederica Wilson is the one who carried that legislation to make sure that African-American studies could be taught. In, even in those 11 counties where African-American studies is being taught, there's a task force that's supposed to do checks and balances to see whether or not it's being taught correctly. The, it only has one staffer with, within, that, uh, within that task force, and it's all where they're not properly funded. But let's, in, let's, let's, let's put this in perspective. Right now, within the state of Florida, the governor, he's not trying to tell us uh, whether or not we can teach African-American studies. He's trying to referee how it's taught. Right. And that's the problem that we're dealing with. And lastly, you look at the teachers now. Teachers don't even want to touch teaching African-American history right now because they're scared, they're fearful that they're going to be fired. And that's all they wanted to do. As you can see, this was their topic, and now they have moved on to something else yeah. because they've done what they tried to do. To